Okay, so this is my EndNote, and I download citations here and I store them. It's like a library for them. I can keep them in different groups and label my groups. And I tell people you can label your groups by paper, subject, date, anything that would be useful to you. You can put your citations in more than one group, too. So you keep them all nicely organized here. Then, when you're doing your research, you can go into really anywhere that you would be finding your articles, your books, web pages, and some of the different programs work better than others. Um, but I'll go into, say, Academic Search Premier and look for an article. I could be doing this in Google Scholar or, oops, where have we got? Back up here. So, I'll look for articles on PATH. I'll say, oh, this looks like a lovely article on PATH. Read the abstract. Oh, I want this article on CAT. I'm going to send it off to EndNote. And there, are, this would work differently with each program. But for me, I'll just say export, save, open, and EndNote. You can see I've got Zotero on my computer as well. And it will go to EndNote. You could do a group at one time. You don't have to do it individually. And now here it is. I could add it to one of my groups over here if I want. I can preview what it would look like in a works cited list. I've got it set on MLA, but there's lots of options. Um, if I wanted to, I could attach the PDF, and then it could be stored there with it. Then, so I have that all organized, which is nice. And then the other side of it is, when it comes time to write a paper, I'd be writing my paper, and let's say I need to insert a citation. I would go to EndNote, insert citation, and I can search by author, title, subject, you know, whatever, put in cat. I don't know which one that was, but let's say I decided I wanted this one. I'd say insert, and it would insert Let's see, it's not putting in, oh, because it's not an in-text citation type of style, so it's just starting my bibliography for me. If I wanted to change the style, I could. It can do footnotes. As I add more, it alphabetizes them in proper order. Does that make sense? So that's the basic of how they all work, although they're all somewhat different. Do you have any questions about that? Yes, yeah, so that tab in Word, does that automatically populate? Because it pops up when you download the program? It does. Okay. And if you have a Mac, it's slightly different. It's under Tools, and then it'll say, and that's just for EndNote. For it, it works, it's actually easier. Like Zotero, I'm also running. I'm going to let um, you tell about it. But it's even easier on Zotero, I think. Do most people use these things to store their documents <coughs> in addition to other resources? Uh, does that slow it down a lot? It depends on which program and how you're using it. I mean, I'm not as familiar with EndNote as right. I am with Zotero. Um, and one of the benefits of Zotero, I'm going to be the Zotero salesperson, um, is that if we have access to the full text, it pulls it down when you pull down the citation automatically. Which EndNote does not. Um, so it just, auto if we have that full text, it automatically attaches it. So you have it in there. Do you want to? And, and we being American University? Yes. Right. And I think it really just it. varies by person. A lot of them store them. I would, if it were me for my research, rather than having them in two places, I would store them attached. Mm -hmm. And they, it has, look, they all have a nice reader. So if you have something that's attached, like this one has an attached got, um, PDF, it stays there, and then I can open it and do all the normal PDF reader things, highlight it, bookmark it, make notes in it, that sort of thing in the PDF, and it's the same. So is that safe on like your account? Will it sync across devices? Or is it on, on the local hard drive? That comes, it, it depends. That With depends. Maybe, we, maybe we should do our pros and cons. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we should, because that, that's one of the potential Dividing cons factor. of an yeah. Okay. Here we have, we were going to show you our subject guide, but from our library's main web page. 
under, well, actually, this one's easier to get to. It's just under citation style guide. But we do have also then a plug-in for our subject guides. Lots and lots of subject guides on lots of topics put together by the librarians who are experts in those topics. So if you ever want to come here. And under citation and endnote, you can find guides to the different programs we're talking about today. There are other programs, like RefWorks right. is a big one. We just, we can we only support so many. Right. So, and under um, just the regular citation style guide, or actually under all of them, there's a tab called, which program should I choose? And it looks at some of the pros and cons, and we'll just kind of talk to you about them. You can ask questions. Uh, what was the question? Oh, about oh, multiple devices. And just thinking across devices. Um, EndNote, you want to say how that works with EndNote, or how it doesn't work with EndNote? <laughs> it's EndNote, the one that the university provides for you to download, is just on your desktop or your laptop. It does not work across devices. If you want to make it work, you can also sign up for an EndNote basic account, like their web-based uh, program that's free, and then you can use that to sync, but it's a little more complicated to do across multiple devices than the other two programs. Mm -hmm. So Zotero started its life as a Firefox extension and now exists as a full-fledged desktop client, much like um, EndNote. But because it started out in the cloud, it continues to live there. So when you create a Zotero account and sign up for an account, you now have a web account and a desktop client at the same time. And as long as you're connected to the internet, it's constantly and automatically syncing. And then when you're using a library computer, using your home computer, using your school computer, you can sync through the web and have access to all of your stuff all the time. So that is one of Zotero's strengths. Um, one of it, yes. And when you're not connected, it will sync once you get back. Yes, exactly. So, so you want to do research for a couple months, do everything on your computer, and then once you get back. Right. Then it would automatically start to, to sync back up as soon as you're back online. Um, so that's definitely one of Zotero's strengths. Another one of its strengths is, I think, ease of, of learning curve. It's really easy to work with right out of the box um, because it started with that open source e open source ethos. There's a lot of um, documentation, so their website includes tutorial videos, all sorts of troubleshooting. If you run into a problem, you just search on their website. Somebody else has had that problem, and there's a whole discussion thread about how they fixed it. Um, so I've found that. I don't have to be a whiz. I can fix things that go wrong in my Zotero account because there's such a big user community feeding that documentation. Um, its weaknesses, so depending on the fields you're in, someone mentioned SIS. Are we all SIS? Political theorists. Um, <coughs> Psychology. Justice law technology. Okay. Um, so Zotero doesn't, so EndNote's strength, like its real strength, is the library of citation styles it supports. I mean, if you're going to publish in esoteric journals that have their own style guide that nobody else uses, there's a good chance EndNote has that style. Zotero has a much more limited set of styles behind it. It's going to have the big ones. It's got MLA and Chicago and APA and ALA. <laughs> anyway, it's got the big, it's got the big ones that you're going to have, and most of the political fields are Chicago based. You know, APA is Chicago, or um, the APS, American Political Science Association, has a Chicago based. So if you do your things in Chicago, you may have to manually edit or tweak here and there, but it has Chicago, right? Um, and so depending on what you want for your career long term, how much publishing you plan to do, it may be worth the learning curve for EndNote because it's going to support all of those different weird quirky styles that journals will have on their own. Do you want to talk about Mendeley a little bit? Mendeley. Its strengths and weaknesses? Mendeley, I think, as having, I started using Zotero in grad school as a student and I thought it was really great until I started using Mendeley. Because <laughs> I, Zotero is really, really nice for web resources. Like, I still That's use it I as a book marketing tool. I was going to point out, because it's great. Do you see up here on the screen? Because I have Zotero on my computer, it recognizes 
that this is a website I might want to save. So all I would need to do is just click this and it would save this website for me with a screenshot of it too, of what it looks like today while I was here. So the website, I'd yeah. say it's definitely it's the best one. It is not great but at extracting metadata from PDFs that compare to manually tag a PDF with everything that's like so. Mendeley, on the other hand, is really, really good at extracting metadata from PDFs. Um, so I have been learning Mendeley this summer in preparation for this workshop, um, and I've been very, very pleased with it. I gave a Zotero consultation earlier this summer, and we had, I think, two out of 10 times it successfully extracted the metadata, so I wasn't manually. And by so metadata, you mean I mean the title, all yeah. right. all the stuff that you want, that's more of a citation. Okay. So okay. Okay. Yeah, no, if you too. are, yeah. um, if you have Using a lot of PDFs, PDFs already, yeah. really is really. Um, if right. you if you're just starting your research and you're going to be importing the citations as PDF, it doesn't matter as much. Right. right. But if you have a bunch that you already want to pull them over, mm -hmm. okay. you can yeah. add folders, et cetera, et cetera. The other um, thing that's interesting about Mendeley is there's also a social component of it, which you, I don't use it, but depending on your field and depending on how many other people in your field are using it, it may be a nice tool for you. Um, so you can use it like a scholarly communication base. You can upload your, your publications and like keep, keep some basic stats on like your downloads from Mendeley's library, et cetera, stuff like that. So that's, you know, that's interesting to you, it's there, it's not. Um, you can also use it, you can use that function to um, say you're working on the computer in the library and you don't have your whole Mendeley blah 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 with you. You can upload things there and then later save them at home. Like I just re-downloaded Mendeley and by logging into the web component and then downloading it, I was able to download all my citations from my other um, library. That said, this storage, so Mendeley is free, um, Zotero is free, and Node is proprietary. It's for by so the it's paid for by the university, but once you're done, like, you can't, if you want to update, so you, you can, can keep it, and take you can keep it, on your computer, but, but you can't um, update. Yeah. So there is a limited amount of storage that you can use on a web part of Mendeley. I think it's a gigabyte and then after that you can buy more. I've got more. That down here too. But um, so I can have to do this. But something to keep in mind. And so that was for yeah. Mendeley? Mendeley, yeah. So the web, the desktop version, obviously it's your RAM on your own computer, so store away. But this, the, um, the syncing function, like if you mm -hmm. put all your stuff if in the you cloud, you yeah. want to download onto multiple computers, you, know, you might have to do some on your own if you want to keep using the free storage. So. And if you do put the PDFs in there, that will take up a good bit of storage. Right? Yes, and you can choose to attach the PDFs. I like that function a lot because they're just there, like the metadata is there, like everything is organized. Um, but if for some reason you only wanted to save the citations, you could do that and it would be more storage. So. I know when Olivia and I did this last year, that really just kind of wanted us to tell them what we thought the best would be <laughs> for them. But there, there isn't an answer, answer to what's yeah. the best for you or you. So, so just ask us questions so we can show you some more examples of things that you like. I know you mentioned that you thought that in those that you couldn't find a place to put notes. It does have that feature if you wanted it. Um, let's see. Hold on. All right. So here I am in my and if I go down, there's an option here. I can add my own keywords. There's a, if I wanted to be able to search it by keywords, I could add them. And there's also a note there. So it's got ah, keywords already added. And I could add some more if I wanted to. And then down here under the notes section, um, a research notes section, I could add notes to myself. Mm -hmm. Or in the PDF, I could mm -hmm. add notes that way. 
Hotel, sure. Mendeley is it works in a, the same way. They, it has a really nice PDF reader, like Adobe, um, and it also has a pretty robust note um, function, so you can add stickies, blah blah blah. Oh. Um, because I know my Zotero oh. library. Oh, okay. Yeah, use good. I know definitely use Zotero in Mendeley. Is there one that you can highlight things in the PDF? Mendeley, yes. In no, does. Zotero yeah. does too. Right? Because all of that is an Adobe function, and so right. it's basically embedding Adobe into the feature. So, so as long as the PDF is attached, you'll be able to do that. Can um, you then take that PDF out of this and put it back into like a regular file? Does that stuff still stay? So this is what the Zotero library looks like, and you can see it looks an awful lot like an EndNote library. The import function is slightly different. Um, as Mendy mentioned, it's, you know, it was born out of, um, out of working online. So if I'm finding anything I want, in our library catalog, the Google Scholar, and the regular Google, however you are finding things. So the first thing I want to do is say, well, which of my libraries do I want to save this to? And I usually just have a test folder for when I'm doing this presentation. So if I like this particular political theory article, I have a couple of options. So I have Zotero running on my machine, and so right now there are multiple things on this screen I could save. So it gives me a folder icon. And if I click there, I get a title list of all the things that have come up in my library. And I can check off the ones I want and click OK, and then it would save all of those. So if I'm trying to do math and import. So if, if you decide you want to go to Zotero, yeah. but Zotero doesn't extract metadata from PDFs already, you could come to oh, search for all You could PDFs. search and then just pull them down, would be my recommendation if that's your choice. Um, and then if I come into a particular article, this is one that does have PDF available. So I just click on the article icon that's now in my browser, and we can see on the bottom right folder, it's saving to the test folder, and there's that EBSCO full text that came in. Um, Citizens by Waldron. So I come in, and here it is. I can see there's the full text, um, and I can open it, and so it opens it in Adobe. So now I have my highlighting functions, my note-taking functions, just like I would have in Adobe. And when I save that and close it, it keeps it. Um, and then I also have, so here's all of my bibliographic information. So um, it automatically did all of that? It automatically pulled all that in. I didn't have to type it in. For Zotero? Yeah. And they all, if you're pulling from a database like they'll that, all. they'll all do that. So what you're talking about with Mendeley having the metadata was only if you have the existing yeah. PDFs. Yeah. So if you've been doing research for years, but you've never used one of these programs, and you want something that you can upload your PDFs to that will then just extract all of that data from it, that's Mendeley's real strength. That's where it, it flies above and beyond the others. And do I, is it true? Because the, the system can only do with what the PDF actually has attached to it. But my my understanding that Mendeley will also go out and look mm -hmm. like okay, if this is the title of this PDF, I'm not just going to look on it if it doesn't have the information. I'm going to go out and look around the web for that mm -hmm. information elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Is that so? That's part of how it's functioning. Um, but you can see you've got your notes. You can add personalized tags, and you can add related articles. So if you're doing a particular paper, say you've got a big political theory folder but there's specific topics under that you want, you can sort of link together articles and say these five articles are all related to each Without other. Without building up the stuff. Right. Um, so that's what it looks like in this center. And so if I'm wanting to work through Word, instead of EndNote, it's under Add-in. And the icon's a little funky, but that's inserting a note and that's inserting a bibliography. So if we have our sample citation, The first thing it does is it prompts me to pick a style. Um, I can say I want Chicago full note. I choose between footnotes and endnotes. I say OK. And then a Zotero search bar pops up. 
Electronic for Political Theory. It starts to show me things that match that search. I say OK. And it's formatted my footnote for me. Now, if I had 30 footnotes in a paper and somebody wanted to see a works cited list, I would then just click here and it would generate a works cited based on all of the individual citations that are in the paper. So it's, it's kind of like magic, right? <laughs> Which is really the exciting. Paper writing you stuff. remember your undergraduate years and all those bibliographies you spent two hours formatting after you'd written the paper. Yeah, so this sort of brings that two hour window down to about like a 15 minute window. And would you all agree that this side of it, the paper writing side, is about equal for all three? Yeah. Yeah. Once they all got do your, this pretty well, I mean, very well. Yeah. Once you've got your library established, right. they all do it well. It's just the formatting looks a little different, like these icons versus, you know, EndNote integrates with Word in a little more robust looking manner, but the functionality is, is completely equal. What about PCs versus Macs? Are any of them better on Mac? I have, uh, so I use a Mac at home and I run Zotero on my Mac at home and with the syncing, it just, it visually looks a little different. Um, there's a little scroll that appears at the top of your Mac toolbar in Word and that's where the Zotero is. So you click on that scroll and then there's a menu and it's insert citation, insert bibliography, etc. But they all function well. But they all function very well. In your, the downloading of citations, there's an, one extra step and because I don't use it on a Mac, every time I help someone, it's a little clunky. But I just think it's because I only use it on a PC. Once you got used to using it, I don't think it's an issue. But I would say that, that Zotero for downloading the citations is easier yeah. than in the, for, on a Mac or a PC. I have another plug for InNet that I thought of. Okay. It is the one the university provides, and it's what a lot of professors use. So if you wanted to work as someone's uh, assistant, that type assistant. of thing, there's a good chance they'll ask you to use it. Not all of them, and I think more and more are switching. I was about to say, I've done a lot of support for SIS professors on Zotero, right. so. I, I honestly probably like Zotero better than InNote, even though I'm here today as the InNote plumber. But it, it's, yeah, I think that more people will use it. Maybe that's just my bias, because I'm the one that helps them when they work with it. Yeah, sure. Show me look at Yeah. Yeah. I found that too. My professor works with EndNote and she's like, everything's in there and sticking with it. But my research is a little different than hers. Yeah. So I was thinking of using my research on a different one. Mm -hmm. Can you switch back and like can you mm -hmm. send citations? All of them. Right. We, we have that on the subject guide that I pointed out. It's how to move things around. Right. So, so it's sort of, there's a particular file extension. Like if you're using a Mac to write a Word document, you can open that on a PC, right? Even though right. it's, so it's the same. So it, there's a file extension that all of this data is stored in and all of the software will recognize that same. So there's a way to download your folder of citations and upload it to a different program. So you're not wedded. No. Right. Yeah, no. It's not like, boy, I chose Zotero and now I'm stuck with it. Yeah, no, they all even happen. though I've realized that InNote is going to be better for me. You can move over. Sort of like, for instance, like if you have a whole bunch of PDFs and you don't have a metadata for them, you, you can, can just, just put them into Mendeley. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And, and then import them over in yeah. Zotero. You can get a crazy and fancy. Right. <laughs> I think I would personally rather re import than do that. But that's right, right. because Zotero is so easy to re import it. Personal yeah. But that is possible and people have done it. Okay. Or you could go download the book stuff that you need from the tarot, because that's so good from the online stuff mm -hmm. and buy it from that way. Yeah. And I've talked to people that use both. I mean I'm using both just to learn both. But yeah, for example, <laughs> someone that uses Zotero for their website yep. and in note for their books and journal articles. Or yeah, Mendeley for their PDF. Like you could learn to use more than one. Right. Like, um, we don't have any School of Communication people in here, but a lot of SOC people really like um, Zotero because, again, news-based or web-based information is very ephemeral. But one of the things that Zotero does is it takes a screenshot of where you pulled it from. So I've got this news article from the New York Times, and if I tried to go back to it, it might look different, right? Because people are live editing the web constantly. But I have this screenshot of what it looked like on July 11, 2014. 
and it's always going to look like that because Zotero stored that, that screenshot. So if you find that you're working with ephemeral media, Zotero is very strong for that. But not all fields do. A lot of fields are very rooted in traditional academic sources, and so that feature isn't necessarily. But I mean, government websites, when you think of what an, admi an administration changes, those websites just totally reboot themselves, right? And people restructure the way they look, the way information is presented. And if you're pulling in government information as part of your research, something that captures what that site looked like at the moment you were signing to it has value. Um, you said searching in the Word document. Can you do that by keyword or the yeah. folder name? anything you want to write, it, author, anything that shows up over here will pop up, and including the notes and tags that you add will pop up as you're doing that search in the Word document. And that's true for all? Yeah, and that's true for all. Do you raise your hand if you mentioned it? I want to see this PDF thing. Mendeley is the one that I don't know how to use. Mm -hmm. so. It's new to me. So I'm going right. show, show us how this works. If you're in with it, it's, I love it right now. I'm sure that I will feel differently when it starts to not work the way I want it to. It does have, the documentation is nice because like Zotero, it's a free software, so there's a huge user community. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a problem with it, Google it. And likely there's like a million responses. Okay, so let me show you, this is what the desktop looks like. I have imported my library um, as we were talking, so that was very fast. Um, you can filter it in lots of different ways. If you open from your library, it's always going to pop up in a new tab. So this is the PDF reader. Um, it looks a lot like Adobe the note function, the sticky note function, the highlight function, it's all up there. Um, so that is nice. Um, like Zotero, you can create as many folders as you want and organize things in different ways. You can drag and drop. Um, you can filter in lots of different ways. Um, I will show you how to import a document. So I've also already installed the browser tool, which is here. It just lives in your bookmark bar. So let's find an article. I, know. <laughs> I love seeing people's sample searches. Search I just figure since we're not a science school, <laughs> yeah. no one's going to be like, oh, yeah, that's wrong. Search box is our library search engine. Have you all used it? It's like our library, Google. Yeah. It searches our catalog and also most of our electronic journals across. If you are or interested not all. in learning more about yeah. it, I'm giving a talk this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> on library yeah. resources. It's, so a, it's a nice tool. Though. It's, yeah, it's, I, if I would have had this in undergrad, I would have done so much better. Um, anyway, okay, so full text online, great. So I want to save this. It's always you can I I left myself unsigned in so you can see this. Um, it's gonna you can of course like just leave yourself signed in, but that might be annoying. So it's something like Zotero doesn't ask you to do that. No. Once you're in, you're in. Unless you actively sign out. here, I can sync here, yeah. and it will pull it in. It will eventually do that on its own, but if you wanted it like right away that second, mm -hmm. um, 
And the icons look very similar across. I mean, Zotero also has that sort of green looping arrow. Mm -hmm. And I, I do have students from time to time who take the automatic thinking for granted. And their system is running slowly, and they're in a hurry, and they slam down their laptop, and they run off. And then it's like, oh, it didn't sync. I don't have it. So always, if the arrow is spinning, it's still actively syncing. So don't slam your laptop shut and run away. <laughs> <laughs> you will lose it. <laughs> Something I want to point out that I was like very enchanted by at first towards Mendeley, but then I was disappointed by, is if it, it touts itself as auto-downloading all your PDFs as you are saving them, but if it's behind any sort of paywall, even if you have your institutional proxy and you have full access, it won't auto-download them, so don't worry about it it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> In the will about 70% of the time, if you, it's a one-time process, you have to go in and put in our authentication code URL, and then there's a find full text button, and it will, it will pull them from the databases that we subscribe to, not all the time, and sometimes it's frustrating because you're looking at the PDF, you and know, you're like, I know I have access, mm -hmm. but, why and you can manually it? attach it, but that's just one more step, but it, yeah, that process works, I'd say about and that's where I think Zotero is probably the strongest. Yes. Because if agree. you're authenticated to have it, it will pull it down. Right. I would agree with that. So just another thing to make your decision more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about why you like it so much? Because of the PDF um, mm -hmm. storage. Like, I, if you downloaded, if you have a giant folder of pre-existing pre research, pre-existing stuff that you had before, you yeah. downloaded Mendeley, you can drag and drop it, and it's there. Calculate. If it can't find something, it will let you know, and then it will search. It can search Google Scholar automatically. It can search, like, PubMed, and then it can search by, like, a couple of other weird metadata things. So that can be very time-saving. Um, mm -hmm. That said, the, the auto PDF downloading thing was, like, a huge blow. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you're reading the documentation on the website, you're like, this is exactly what I need. Yeah. And it will work if, like, if something is has fallen out of copyright and it's in the public domain and it's in Google Scholar, yeah, of course it's going to, like, auto-download that. Yeah. Can you manually do it? Like, if you're reading yes, one of our you databases, can you could download it to your desktop exactly. and then... Exactly. Okay. But it'll, it'll, same it'll old, that just same old thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. It'll okay. be the same old, like, oh, I'll put it here and then I'll drag it into another way and it'll be there. But you do have to take that extra time. But all of it, even like, you know, it's like, oh, there's that extra inconvenience. If you compare it to what your life was like when you were yes. Yes. Right. Yes. managing these yes. citations, boy, I have to save my PDF and then drag it to right. another folder. Yeah. Yeah. That and then it'll do all the work for me <laughs> when I do my paper. The word right. plugin is really, really similar. Like, yes, it's works so plugins. similar so to similar. Zotero that you've already seen. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. If I have a bibliography in a document right now, mm -hmm. is there anything I can do with that to like make this work? You know, find all that you, stuff. You have to <laughs> look them up by title. Okay. Yeah. And you, you just have to go through. But it wouldn't take that long. No, I mean, of course not. I wondered yeah. something to look them up by right. title. And especially with search box, because you can just copy and paste the title into search okay. box, and, then and check, it'll check, because check you're through. searching by title, it'll prioritize that as the first right. result. Yeah. And then boom, 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 boom. Okay. You're done. And that because can no. paste. Yes, right. exactly. Oh yes. Because okay. I mean, neither, I know in well, I assume neither of them. What about if you're using a lot of government documents or treaties, things that have strange citation styles? Yep. How do the programs deal with those? Um, it depends. I pretty well. Let me see if I have any government documents in here. I'd be surprised if I don't. Um, surely in the Western legal tradition, those, those are all. Because I'm definitely well. Let's let's do it live. May I? Oh yeah. I'm just saving more things. Let's play live. So are you familiar with ProQuest Congressional? Let's go find a hearing. Let's go find a congressional hearing, right? Yeah. Let's look at the document. Let's look at the example. Um. I'm because 
Dozen Notes is more robust than looking at it, and you have the option to put your reference type in the most obvious, like journal articles, books, that kind of thing. But I mean, it goes on and on. Music, personal communication, mm -hmm. thesis, grant hearing, film. So it will, it has a whole lot of choices. Yeah, Mendeley also has hearing. Yep. Statute. The only thing, I don't think any of them support group book. Oh, okay. It's okay. No lawyers in the room. Okay, last year I had people who were like, well, who's going to help me most with citing case law? And I was like, none of them. You are out of luck. Um, you have to manually do your own case law citations. So I, um, but that's okay. Nobody's writing legal briefs in here. No? Awesome. Okay, so what, um, let's see. Ruth's going to do a search in Congressional Publications for the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, so we're getting, and this is just a drive-by of Congressional, uh, ProQuest Congressional, so if you do a lot of Congressional or government-based research, just tuck that not little brain in the back of your head so we can see the different types of government, or of, of House and Senate documents that are coming up. So we've got the Congressional record, we've got hearings, we've got bill texts. Um, CRS reports, reports on bills, documents, etc. So let's just find a hearing. Obviously, we've had lots of hearings over the years on the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, so let's just pick one. I picked one that was very close. <laughs> and you know what? I have a No. Interesting. Yeah, this is a funky database, so that's a great example. Um, so there are glitches with all of them. So yeah, it doesn't have an export to... That was ProQuest? So but most ProQuest databases have... Okay. So this one's funky. So this is, um, this is specifically a congressional okay. information database. ProQuest bought it from Lexis. Okay. So it's, they put their colors and branding on it, but it's still using the Lexis back end, if that makes any sense. Um, things you don't need to know about the way information companies buy each other out. Um, let's go to a government website and see if that's any better. Anybody familiar with SD6? No? You get the public affairs library. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you did want to do something on U.S. legislation and use ProQuest, could you then put it into one of the other programs and then? It here? looked like it didn't want you to export it at all. Um, I'll look it up. And you could do save to Mendeley potentially. Let me um, let me take a look at it too because yeah, for InNote I would need an export button. Da, 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 da. Okay, so. Government documents to the rescue. So this is the government printing office's website that I went to. Um, and here I've got my little PDF icon for, that's fascinating. Um, oh no. Uh, my computer is out of date. <laughs> Maybe it's <laughs> secure. No, we're just not doing this right now. Okay. This is so fascinating. Government documents are being difficult. Let's try. Are you using that GEO website as well? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So, quick government documents. So, if you go to sdsys.gov, which means Federal Digital System, um, sdsys, Federal Digital System. So, if you or anyone who ever needs to do government research. Um, if you go into advanced search, you get a sense of um, all the different types of government documents here. So if it's formally published by the government printing office, this is where you go to look for it. So that includes things like um, all your congressional documents, 
economic indicators, public papers of the president, United States Code, and all of the treaties, I believe, go through the Senate, right? So they'll be in Senate documents. And there are court opinions there? <coughs> For the Supreme Court, For yes. The Supreme Court. Okay. If you need court information, talk to the you know, but it, but it comes up from time to time. Yeah. Um, Google Scholar has a case law tab. Oh. Is, that, is that international? It is not international. It's all U.S., but you can pick by federal courts and state courts and specific courts within the federal and state system. So, freebie information. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually... So what's interesting, so now I'm, I'm beginning to, to think that if you're doing a lot of government document research, you can save this down as a PDF because that's how they're, they're authenticating their information is through an Adobe process. And so Mendeley may be the way to go because then Mendeley is going to extract the, the metadata. I'm sitting here trying it and I can't figure out a way to make it work, work on or in note other than what you just said yeah. either. And you do have the option in all three of putting in the information Maybe. yourself, which is a hassle. That's part of the reason you're trying to avoid it. But it would right. be a one-time one thing. Right, if, it, if it's a rare thing that you're working with. You so can, you can do new item. And just select government document and then right. fill in. But you want to try something like that. Then you have to and then you work. work manually attached. And so that's, that's your workaround. But I think if you're doing government documents as your primary type of document, because they're extracted, you're extracting information from PDFs, I'm, I may recommend Mendeley for you. And all of them will have the metadata that Mendeley needs? Well, mostly, no, yeah, not mostly. Ne not necessarily. If but you had there? a weird PDF that was like something that you scanned yourself. Right. Right. No. <laughs> so but if you're extracting it from an official government right. website, because these, um, so GPO is actually really thorough and the way they formatted these. So you can see there's like the, this, this mark at the top. This is an authenticated government publication. Mm -hmm. So they've done a lot of thinking about things that most of us like to take for granted, which is, you know, if we're going to put you know, over the years, the government printing office's job was to make sure that authenticated information was published. And so how do you do that in a virtual world? And so they've done a lot of thinking about how to create PDFs that can't be manipulated once they're thrown up on the web so that this is an authentic government document. So they're attaching the appropriate metadata to it. And you know, if it's not, all you're not going to find it anywhere else. Right. Either, so, so it's, you know, it's got all of the authenticated correct behind the scenes metadata happening on this PDF. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be true of anything you pull down off of GPO's website. Yeah. So you I would just download it for years and then drag it <laughs> in. You didn't do that, I don't think. <laughs> no, but if you, so all of the departments, mm -hmm. if you're publishing through mm -hmm. GPO, okay. so you do mm -hmm. some, so State Department does some of its own <laughs> self-publishing because they all do, mm -hmm. but they also send information to GPO for publishing as well. So if GPO publishes it, okay. it's going to have this authentication, it's going to have, if there's a person whose job title is public printer of the United States, right, <laughs> crazy job things job. that happen. Um, so he's not going to put this on the website unless it's authenticated and gone through the proper process. Okay. Um, as the end user, you just want that PDF to work, right? right. But he has to make sure that if the government's publishing it, that it's authentic government information. So those PDFs will be able to pull in what you need. So when you were talking about the related articles function, yeah. is that for all of the programs? Or? Um, I only really know it in Zotero. The tagging? Well, so there's different kinds <coughs> of tagging. Sure. So you can actually say, so you can pull up from my library and say this article is related to this article. And so when I read this article, I can go in and I can create networks for myself within my library. And I think that may be unique to Zotero. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm not sure that in that it does that. Um, I don't think it does. If it does, it's something that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. 
And right. for the most part, you can get the same effect with folders. Right. Yeah. And the only thing that comes up, I think, is, um, and one of the benefits to using any of these that we haven't really talked about is that you've got your own sort of stored library of things you've used. Because especially at the beginning of a PhD program, you may take a class and you find papers or articles for that class, and that was all fine and good. And then two years later, you go, wait a minute, I read something about this, and I want to go back and find it. If you're diving back into the databases based on vague memory of what that paper was, good luck. <laughs> Right. But if you've got your own stored database, you know what class you took it for, you know what date you, you, you you've got a much better chance of finding it. But something like this now is going to allow you to leave that in its original folder, but link it as being related to some other kind of, of research. So that's and like in in notes, you could assign keywords that link it. I mean, mm -hmm. there are ways to make it work, but no, I don't think it has that feature. When you're importing, if you are importing PDFs that you already have and they're already in their own folders, can you keep those folder organizations in the program or just automatically or do you just do that yourself? I'm sorry, what was for Mendeley, like if you've got several fold if you've got folder storage already where you've got things organized will it by repli folders. Replicate it? Will it replicate yeah. your folder system? I don't think so. But you could import it in such a way that it did, like create a folder and import yeah, it. Yeah, you would just totally have to mirror your folders in Mendeley, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Like you could create that same structure. Okay. But I don't think that it would, it's not smart enough to create it for you, I wish. Um, the tagging, who asked about the tagging? Mendeley also supports the same kind of tagging as um, the, the related Zotero. So you could relate documents. Okay. I. I use the folder system, but that's just because me and the session group. Would that double up the memory use if you're double if you're you know putting things in different folders? Different folders yeah. Probably. Yeah. I've not tagging is definitely like the more sophisticated <laughs> thing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but um, yeah. um I wouldn't stress about Memory. Yeah, they're, they're not. You'd have to be doing they're some real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the files are not that big, and I've, you know, I've worked I have with professors using Zotero to do books, yeah. multiple books that right. they're writing, and they've not hit their memory wall. So I do not think that over the course of your PhD program you're going to run out of memory storage in Mendeley or Zotero. I've never heard of anyone actually being um, the memory is. Specific. Someone in this room may be the one who proves me wrong on that. Like <laughs> yeah, let us know. All the <laughs> research, but. Hi, sorry, I, I've, I've run out of space on this trip. Really? There you go, someone in this room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prove us wrong. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It, it's just good so. to hear. What I think I ran out of space on was a shared Zotero. Oh, okay. Um, it was collaborative research. And then it kept giving me errors when I tried yeah. to do, like, store things on my personal one, too. Mm. So I, and once I dumped the collaborative one, once I was, like, okay, done with the project, it, it all went fine. Right. So I'm sure if I'm not doing, like, things with five different people, it would be different. So I think that's smaller. Yeah. I think the um, groups are where they get you. And that's something we haven't, did, we haven't talked about that function much. No. But that is. It, it, it can be very nice. Um, you can, um, so if you're working with a a faculty member, a peer, and you're doing things together, you can create groups so that you can both see what you're finding, that you're doing research together. Um, the free version of Zotero does cap the number of group members you can have, and I think the memory storage for the groups And now that I think about it, um, some of the things that I was pulling was from the Library of Congress where it also was attaching pictures. Um, so I think it may have been the image files to like mm -hmm. large maps and things like that. Yeah. That might be one reason to keep your files in Dropbox or memory for your stuff and then just use this really as a citation reference. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is fun. But yeah, but yeah. I can almost you know cross that bridge when you come to it because again, unless you're doing large image files or working with large groups of people, that <laughs> it's great to hear because it does apparently happen, but it's it's rare for people to run it, doing personal research, to run into the files over run. Is it possible to share group libraries between different programs, or does it have to be like EndNote to EndNote? Is that okay? It's EndNote to EndNote. I think Eric said Tarot. Yeah. The only other thing I think that you can do is, because if you're using the web-based versions of any of them, 
if you're willing to like share your login and password with your professor or with your coworker. Yeah. Or just I've done download that. some PDFs mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Put them in Dropbox. Yeah. Or, yeah. No. Because you can share in all three of them. It's clunkier in him though. Right. But you can in all three of them. But I think it has to be with someone, someone who has the same program. And did you say you can have all of them on the computer at once or does that cause any issues? Can you have I had an day? issue yesterday, but I found because I have both EndNote and Zotero on mine. And um, but I was able to solve it. It wanted to automatically download stuff to Zotero. And I wanted to, for the sake of today, be using EndNote. Mm -hmm. And I just Googled my problem and it told me how to go in and automatically uncheck Zotero as and then if I want to later I can go recheck it. So yes, I mean you could conceivably have all three on your computer, but you might occasionally right. run into problems like I did yesterday where it's and See, it took me a while. Oh, you know, I can't come here tomorrow and not be able to use EndNote. Right. So you're going to have various preferences and settings you can set up in their general settings. Um, for your syncing, you need to have your login information put in. And you can say how often you want to sync and whether or not you want to sync just the citation or sync the file. So that could be another thing that, you know, I don't necessarily, like on my personal computer, I want the file, but I don't need the file right, syncing to exactly. the cloud. So yeah, that's. And I had to yesterday. I kept trying to go into Zotero standalone and fix the problem, and I realized I needed to go into the, the online Zotero and tell it to stop trying to automatically grab stuff, mm -hmm. which I did. So now it's fine. Just a little bit of a learning curve. Um, is it more common on individual um, journal? websites for one program to be on there and not, not others, or are they, if one is there, they kind of all of them? I'd say they're all. Yeah. Because again, it's using that same, I don't think they like to advertise that, but it's that same type of file that they're all importing. If you can export it, you can export it to any of them. Yeah. And some of them, so it's, um, the one we don't support is RefWorks, and RefWorks is owned by the same people who own Lexis. So if you're in something like Lexis Academic, it's going to really push you to export to RefWorks, but you don't have to. You can export to the other programs. Or like well. Google Scholar wants you to automatically export to BizTech. I'm not even sure what that is, but you can change it. It's yeah. not un under settings, and it's a one-time. Once you change it, it'll remember it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of these programs have business relationships with the same people who are providing data. So. But no, you can skirt that. Does <laughs> Amazon have a preference? I don't think so. And I have, let's see, um, search results on, I don't know, I'll use your example. What's on camera? <laughs> I could see on this and other poems I could get. Um, <laughs> It's a book, and so I'm getting my book icon, and I can insert it, in, import it to my Zotero, which I have managed to close. So if I open my Zotero, and I don't have to have it open to store it, but I like to open it because by opening it, I get to tell it which folder to save okay. to. So I want this in my test folder, um, and now we're going to save I could be on this and other poems by. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now I have it in my test folder. <laughs> so, so yes, Amazon is, is not going to push you to any particular thing. And if I had the save to Mendeley button on my toolbar, I could click that. It would save to Mendeley. I am trying to think with EndNote because it's not good at pulling in websites. I wonder if you search through EndNote if that's. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning some of the things that in it does. Mm -hmm. I don't think this will work. You're, you know mm -hmm. it too. I don't think it does. I would yeah. go. You can manually enter it. I website. would go look this yeah. up in like WorldCat or mm -hmm. Searchbox mm -hmm. and then import it, I think. Yeah. Because it doesn't pull for websites well at all. Okay. It's a 112 page book of I can <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half stars. One of the things I showed you briefly is the subject guide, and um, 
for each of these three programs that we're talking about, there are really detailed subject guides with videos and screenshots and tabs of if you want to do this, if you want to do this, if you want to do this. So it's a great spot to come back to when you're having problems or even when you're trying to decide which one you might go with. I'm having so many problems with this congressional, the ProQuest database. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it working to put it on your... It's giving me garbage management mm -hmm. data. Interesting. And then uh, Google Scholar's not recognizing it. It yeah. is. Well, I mean, yeah, we're well, to know. Off this is a place you know what? I'm gonna actually I'm gonna email our ProQuest rep to talk to them about that because I think it, I really do think it's a legacy problem with having one company buy out a Lexus product because one of the and again this is too much detail, but one of the, the features of the database was when it was originally created is that it would have permanent URLs. So if I were saving these documents or references to these documents, Lexus was guarantee guaranteeing me that 10 years later, 20 years later, that same URL would take me back to that same document. Now, of course, ProQuest buys it back, and, and there's a URL. It says LexisNexis dot da 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 da. So ProQuest then has to work in this way where they can change it to have their branding on it, but that old Lexus link is still going to get you there. So they put this nice ProQuest facade on it, but it's still got all of the Lexus backend data to it, and I think that may be junking up the metadata some. But if you save the URL, you are guaranteed to get back. So, so there's that. But yeah, but that, but it's a problem. I mean, we people use congressional information so much and they cite to it so much. The idea that none of these programs is going to get us a good citation formatting that's something that we need to have a conversation with senators about. So I'll follow up on that for you and hopefully. You know, if enough libraries and enough users who are paying for this product push back on it, it's something that... This isn't very useful to us if we right. can't you know, do anything other than manual cite all this. Yeah. Did you have a question? So we'll work on that. Yeah, yeah. the default works equally well with Chrome as well as Firefox. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had a browser problem. Now, so for Zotero, and I'll let... Uh, Denise answer about Mendeley. Uh, when you're downloading Zotero, mm. there are browser extensions for different browsers. Oh. And what I recommend to, to folks is just go ahead and download them all. Like everybody has a preferred browser that you're using most of the time, but you never know, especially if you're using the cloud syncing function, you're on someone else's computer, you're using you know, your faculty member's computer, you're using your Mac and you prefer Safari, but when you're on a on a PC, you prefer Chrome. It just, it's worth it to have them all downloaded because you don't want to get into that place where you're, for whatever reason, using your not preferred browser and suddenly realizing that you don't have the extension plugged in. So just, when you're setting it up, just do it all. Download the Word extension, download the standalone, download all the browser plugins, it only takes five minutes. And then you don't have to worry about whether or not your browsers are ready. This is the most confusing part of using EndNote, is getting it all downloaded in the first place. I mean, right. not EndNote, Zotero. Mm -hmm. EndNote, because it's um, a desktop, a standalone, it doesn't matter. You know, work. It's fine with any browser that you want to use. Same for Mendeley. And Zotero has, so you can see here that the plugins are available for Word and LibreOffice. Um, but if you're working in something that's not one of those two, like if you're working in, in Google Docs, um, you can drag and drop and it formats the citation. So it's a little, like you don't get that nice little formatted footnote, but you still get the formatted citation and then you can go in and tweak it a little bit. So it's kind of cool. Um, could you show how to export from one program to another? Like for your for what path would that send you? That would be oh, if you right. are in the whatever program I assume it's they're pretty much parallel. 
if you were in were in file and export, so you're right. creating a big like data file yeah. and export mm -hmm. library, and right. you would export it, and then you would like go file import in. So say you're moving from Zotero to Mendeley. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think RIS is the uniform one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can see there's all sorts there of There are types. like tutorial videos for this, mm -hmm. for all of them. That's, those are your friends, like. But yeah, right. but RIS is the, options. yeah, they all have export options. Um, and if you know which kind of library, like if you know you're moving over to EndNote, you can just go ahead and download it as an EndNote XML file. But RIS is sort of the universal file that can be read by by any of the programs. Or in like an import also. On the other side, right. Mm -hmm. You can import the RIS for all things. Mm -hmm. New collection. RIS. Yeah, import. Yeah, RIS. Is and then if I had saved a folder of RIS files, I could click that folder and then I would be able to upload it. I don't have one to show you, but. And I think that would work about the same with all three. Does it retain the organization? I don't know. I've never tried. That's a great question. So you could just get like each individual um, file and then you can just read through it. I worst case scenario. Assume, right. Yeah, worst case scenario, <laughs> you would have to. And you could import by batches, right? So you can do, you know, export a folder and upload it as a folder. And then, so I think that's how I would do it so that you maintained your organizational file structure. Yeah, export a group at a time. Are you looking to leave one and join another? Or are you just sort of preemptively? Well, I have a lot of PDFs, so I'm probably going to get into Mendeley and then convert also. Okay. Yeah, and I, yeah, I know a lot of people who have done that. And it's possible you get them all into Mendeley and you find out you like it there, so. Do you I have a sense that any of these are gonna go, go I mean, EndNote sounds like it might be on the fritz <laughs> or people are just moving away from it, but. I think the university is pretty dedicated to, at least okay. in the near future, I keeping it around. Okay. And all really, of these for all right, of the sure faculty events. members that have it, we're going to continue supporting it for the okay. foreseeable future, at least. But we have talked in RTL about not pushing it right. as much as we used to, just <laughs> because some of these other programs. Students, like with an undergrad, you know, they leave and then they don't have support for it anymore. For and no, for and no, but these other two. Yeah. So, right. for so students, would you recommend? I mean, this is not complicated. So students should be using this, right? Yeah, we think? certainly recommend it to them. Yeah, I mean, maybe not or freshmen not or yeah. first semester. Yeah. So yeah. what's interesting, yeah, the college writing faculty do not want them using it in their freshman year right. because you want to, you want them to actually understand how citations work and why. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're being, if if you give them too many tools to make it happen automatically, they're not internalizing the okay. process and why and how it happens. But by their sophomore year, they're like, why didn't you give this to me last year? It's like not giving the calculators. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it okay, is that a university wide? College writing the college writing program says that they don't allow their students to use it. Now I, I don't know how they prove that the student has or doesn't use it. I usually mention it when I teach college writing, right. but more just in the future as you get further into your research, further into yeah, your major, particularly as you get into when you, your, yeah, 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 your major. Full of PDFs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You've got enough things to worry about at the beginning yeah. of your freshman okay, year. You don't right. need to learn citation software. Yeah. But we do teach it to students. And yeah. we used to have walk-in classes. We're not going to this semester, but we're going to have some tutorial workshops online, and we have these subject guides. Mm -hmm. And you can always set up one appointment. Sure. Yes, we do one-on-one -on -one appointments for all three. So from the library website, if you go to Ask a Librarian, and I would recommend just sending email a research question because that's going to go towards you know, all of our reference librarians will see it and you can say, you know, I'm struggling with my citation library, may I meet with somebody? And we'll figure out based on which library you're using and what program you're in and who the best person to meet with you is and we'll get back to you and we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So. You can chat with us about it, call us, but if you have complicated problems, it's hard to pray for chat. So email or one-on-one -on -one meeting, if you have an easy problem.
It's hard to know what's an easy right, problem when you're having a problem. Okay. Like if this problem were so any easy, problem I'd be able to solve it. People right. tell me that all the time. I just have a quick question. And then yeah, 30 minutes. That's, yeah, that's very long. Thought? Anybody more questions? Excited? Is there yeah. more clarity than you walked in with? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I feel like we give all this information and it just muddies the like water. I'm going to stick to my old method. The subject guides, <laughs> each one has step-by-step -step details about how to get started. So if you choose one of these programs and you want to download it, they'll tell you how to do yes. it, how to get yes. started. Yes. And, and they yeah. all have, like, great video tutorials online. Yeah, right. lots of support. So who thinks they know what they're going to go with? I think I'm going to do Zotero. Okay. Zotero. Yeah. For now. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's so exciting. Yeah, you're yeah. sitting on a great right. opportunity for yeah. a yeah. job. Yeah. And you want to be able to import yeah. it, yeah. and I think you're in the same boat. Um, yeah, probably um, use multiple. But um, also, you were saying that there was a cloud for the tarot. Is, is that true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that uh, for EndNote, only if you also used EndNote Basic or Web. Uh, and you can use the two back and forth easily. Mm -hmm. It's just one more thing that you need to sign up for and learn. Mm -hmm. Once you learn it, it's not difficult to use it to sync, but it's 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 not as seamless as with the other two programs. So, yeah, this is what my desktop library looks like, and this is what my cloud library looks like. So you can see, you know, my folders are all there, the documents are all there. I can access the full text as a PDF from the cloud. You know, the tags that have been pulled in are all there. So. I can still search my library. I can see when it's even in the way cloud. Yeah. So, so once you bring up the cloud, you can sync it with the program on the computer? Mm -hmm. There's a sync button in each. So there's a sync button in the, the program on your computer, and then there's a sync button in the... Um, mm -hmm. So there's my sync button, and it's all ready. So, so when I have the program open and when I'm connected to the internet, it's syncing on a regular basis for me automatically, mm -hmm. but I always want to manually sync before I shut the program down, right? Because I want to avoid that I was caught in that little moment when it didn't sync done. and I lost some of my research, right? That's always a panicked phone call or email that I can't actually help you with. So, um, and I would hate to lose my book <laughs> um, so you're going to be ordering that book from Amazon. No. That thing. Don't argue with me. <laughs> no, but somebody's going to give it to me as a gag gift. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. this coming. For a wedding present. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> When's your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this is Mandalay, as you can see, it looks very similar. This is the clunky social aspect of it. Yeah, so you can see all of the librarians who have Mendeley <laughs> accounts. <laughs> um, and some of us have photos attached and some of us don't. Yeah, so these are other librarians in the library. Um, you can see, like, she's, Rachel has put her publications here, so if people download them from Mendeley, you know, you can give you some stats. You can also, if you can dive in as far as you want to go into the social side of it. You can see um, related articles. They have a pretty big citation library. I don't really use that function, but some people do. It just really depends on your niche, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my library is up here. It looks very similar. You can do um, many of the same things. You can do the standalone. The search function is very nice. Um, you can see it's replicated my folders here from the standalone program. Um, these are, I think the, the crowd, the social aspect of it is what pulls in these papers. Um, groups that I'm not part of any, but if I was, it would be there. And then you can search your colleagues and follow them. How much does it hold? How many citations? Is there a limit? It holds a gigabyte. Megabytes. Megabytes. Gigabytes. 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 Gig
And then if you want more, you can get some. Somehow I maxed my out. There we go. We have so someone else who's maxed things out. out. Um, <laughs> do you want me to show you the in the basic so you can see the web version of that? Right. You can make them. traveling overseas or you know for some reason you needed it it would be there um, any other questions before I show the Like Mary and I, one of our other librarians, has been sharing things just to practice doing it. Because we get a lot of times professors want to share with their TAs, and they're using EndNote, and it, you need to do this to share. Also, if I wanted to use it at home, which obviously I don't, but I could. This is a way to use my work computer. It was not hard to sign up for EndNote Basic, and it's free, and now I can sync everything. But like I said, it's one more step. It's not as seamless as it would be with Mendeley or something. But here's, once I'm in here, I can, you know, look at what I've got. The groups show up the same that they did. And then I've also got groups shared by others, which is, I can look at this as someone else's library. And she can either let me have it just as a reading um, ability, or if she wanted to, she could let me manipulate them. And I could go in and mess with her library if I were her TA and she wanted me to play with it. This would be a good way to do that. So you can highlight and whatnot on the note web as well. Correct. Right. Are these supported by mobile apps? Yes, Mendeley has a mobile app. Zotero has a mobile app. Um, for, for Android? I, think, I don't think it does. Ooh, Android. Hmm. I was just reading about this. Right. Mendeley's you, uh, mobile app reviews are not free. I haven't used it. Right. I know you can use EndNote on Pad, like mm -hmm. an iPad. I don't know. I'm wondering if I said anything in here. Mobile device application. Here's what here's what my research that I did a while ago says about this. So. And it, I did this last summer, so it's possible it's even gotten better since then. I need to check and update it. Okay, I was wrong. They do have it for Android. Another question? Mm -hmm. um, so you can take from the cloud and hear basic program on your computer. If I mean, I know I know it doesn't store that much, but can you back up the citations into the online version? Mm -hmm. Or just take it that way. I don't think that it would let you separate them if you had the attached PDFs. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Because when it syncs, it syncs the whole file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Unless you. No, I still can't think of any way. You would, I mean, there's probably some weird hack that you could do, right. but it would be probably a more time consuming. Like I know in EndNote you can set up multiple libraries. I don't recommend it to people. I just do groups, have one library and multiple groups. Otherwise you can't access your whole library at one time, but some people do. I mean, potentially you could have that as some weird workaround, but 
I think it'd be more clunky than a PDF. Well, like it's really good you question. Can you copy the library as a whole and then take the PDFs out of the text so that you're separated? You could, so opt to just not store your PDFs. The PDFs, right. yeah. You definitely could. But I feel like that's some of what you want from it. You want your library in one place, and you want to be able to find the documentation with the metadata. But you don't have to. You don't attach them. No. Because if you have the citation, you know, it's like word from two words. Yes, that's part of it. How do you find your libraries in EndNote? If you have more than one, you mean? Well, like, I can't find all the citations I put in there, and I think uh, I only uh, found five, and I know there's like a lot more. I'm just going to the library. You my show, it, that note. show it to me, and I'll have yeah. some time, and I'll yeah. see if I can help you. <laughs> 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 I think it's five, in my opinion, right now. And I think EndNote can be frustrating, but like if, if you're, you know, EndNote strength really is the the robust citation styles that it supports above and beyond the others. So if you're really looking at a long arc of a scholarly career, it may be worth learning. And the, the learning curve is steeper, but the payoff may be better. Whereas, you know, Zotero, you are gonna hit the ground running out of the box. I know, Zotero. Yeah, okay. As I said, I honestly think I like it better, and I'm here representing you. <laughs> Once you know in you know, I don't now I don't find it difficult to use it all. When I was first learning it, but it wasn't as easy. Right. Any other questions? How are we on time? It's eleven. Okay. Okay. Remember, we had it until eleven forty-five. But right. we don't have to no, keep. No, I mean through. you guys do not. Okay. Or if one of you wants to say with questions, you're welcome to. Like if you want me to look at your endnote, I will. Does anybody? Anyone just gonna download it right as soon as they walk out of the room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, I just the Zotero is really good for down. It, it, it the the walls that are up there the between table. the libraries and home. Zotero can get past those better than Mendeley. It recognizes better than you. Okay. It recognizes you as a user, as an authorized user, and pulls down the, the PDF without a hiccup. Okay. Um, the only difference being the congressional stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, yeah, I'm gonna. But the I'm gonna start needling our, our rep about like that. Pull it, it'll pull in the PDF with the metadata. Okay. 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 But you can retroactively search it, just like you can. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good. It's great to hear today.